Good evening. Hello. Welcome to Health Insurance 101 Live. We're going to give it just a couple of minutes to see if anybody else joins. But while we're waiting, um, in the comments, why don't you tell me where you're from? Are you here in Oregon? Welcome. We're going to give just a couple minutes for people to join. Hi, Chicky. All right. So hopefully some folks will hop on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and um, we're just going to do this. So. <laughs> Um, welcome to Health Insurance 101 Live. Um, I'm really excited to be doing this tonight with you. And um, tonight we're going to be talking a lot about health insurance, um, primarily through the marketplace um, at healthcare.gov, but a little bit about the Oregon Health Plan too. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll answer them as I see them come up. Um, and hopefully I won't miss anything. Um, we won't be talking too much about Medicare tonight, so if you're eligible for or enrolled in Medicare, um, I recommend visiting SHIBA, which is S-H-I-B as in boy, A, dot Oregon, dot gov, to find help in your area. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is in the comments, I'm going to post here um, everything that we're going to be talking about tonight, to so see, you know, kind of what we're going to be um, discussing. So first of all, what is health insurance and health coverage? Um, sometimes people use the terms health insurance and health coverage um, interchangeably, and they can be a little bit confusing. Um, basically, they're the same thing. Um, usually, people refer to plans that you pay for as health insurance, while coverage through plans like the Oregon Health Plan is called health coverage, because, um, but mostly they're interchangeable. Um, but why exactly do you need health insurance? Um, marketplace plans include a whole bunch of benefits to help you keep um, stay to help you stay healthy, um, and so you don't have to wait um, to use your insurance until you're sick or until an emergency happens. Um, to, so to make sure you have access to all of the benefits included, make sure you go through healthcare.gov um, because all plans that are sold through the marketplace include a whole bunch of benefits. Um, so what I'm going to do is post a list of the 10 essential benefits that are included in all marketplace plans in the comments. Because um, it's a lot easier than listing them out. Um, so you'll see a list of the 10 essential health benefits in the comments. And these are really categories. There's a lot of different services that fit under these benefits. Um, but all plans sold through the marketplace will include um, all of these benefits at minimum. And a lot of them include... Um, some additional benefits as well. Um, these, this long list, um, is a list of preventive services that are included, and these services are included um, in all healthcare.gov plans, and there's no cost to take advantage of these benefits as long as you're visiting an in-network provider. So just make sure you talk to your doctor about the wellness or preventive services available to you. Now, when you're speaking with an insurance agent, make sure you talk about the benefits that are included in the plans available to figure out which plan is the best fit for you. So let's talk about some of the things you might want to discuss when you're meeting with an insurance agent. Um, first of all, a premium is how much you're going to pay each month for your plan. Um, kind of like your rent, it's going to basically stay the same throughout the year, but it might change from year to year. Um, Coinsurance and copayment is the amount of money that you're going to pay when you see the provider for covered services, treatments, or pick up a prescription. Um, a copay is a set dollar amount. For example, you might pay $10 to see your primary care doctor, while coinsurance co is a percentage. So, for example, 10% of an x-ray charge. 
And hello to everyone joining us. Um, a deductible is an amount of money you're going to pay out of pocket before the plan pays a higher amount of your health care bills. Um, not all plans require that you meet your deductible um, before you pay the lower copay or coinsurance amount. So it's really important just to look at your summary of benefits to see how your plan is going to pay and what you're going to be responsible for out of pocket. Um, the out of pocket maximum is the most you will pay out of pocket in a plan year before your plan pays for 100% of your health care bills. And what that means is that when you meet your out-of-pocket maximum, the only thing you're going to pay for the rest of the plan year is your premium, which will keep your plan active. And through the marketplace, the plan year is going to be the same as the calendar year. So it starts January 1st and it ends December 31st. Um, now, you can imagine your network like a group of providers, facilities, and pharmacies who are included in your healthcare squad. You typically pay to see le or pay less excuse me, to see in-network providers. Please feel free to leave any questions that you have about health insurance in the comments, and I'll try and answer them as we go. Um, now, Oregon Health Plan is Oregon's Medicaid program, and it's available to low-income individuals and families. It's important to remember that you can enroll in the Oregon Health Plan anytime, and eligibility is based on this month's income. Um, you also don't need to wait to apply during a specific time in the year. If you're not eligible for the Oregon Health Plan, you can purchase a private plan directly through an insurance company or through healthcare.gov, um, which is the federal website for the marketplace. Um, you can only get financial assistance if you go through the marketplace. Um, and open enrollment is the only time of year that you can sign up or change plans. This year's open enrollment is short. It's from November 1st through December 15th, so it's coming up quick. Financial assistance is still available to help you pay for your plan as long as you go through healthcare.gov. Um, now, tax credits will help you pay your premiums each month. So when you go through the marketplace, you'll need to give your best guess for your 2018 income. And healthcare.gov will walk you through what income and deductions to include. The system will do some math on the back end and determine what cost you should be able to pay each month for your insurance. Hi, Rindy. Um, so the question is, um, an 18-year-old female, not pregnant, no income, would she qualify? So that's a great question, Rindy. Um, based off of what you're telling me, she might qualify for the Oregon Health Plan. However, it's really hard to say because each individual case is different. So what I would recommend doing is to go ahead and give us a call, um, and we can connect you with local assistance, or you can go on OregonHealthCare.gov, and you can find somewhere local that can help apply um, for the Oregon Health Plan or the Marketplace, depending on which program would be the best fit. All right, so to go back to the presentation, um, after you put in your income and the system does the math to determine what cost is um, considered affordable for you, it's then going to compare the cost to the plan options in your area to determine how much tax credits you can get. Um, you can use all of them or some of them or none of them. Um, it's totally up to you, but if you don't use them all throughout the year, you will get the, you can get the rest back on your taxes. Um, but Keep in mind, though, it's important to report any changes to income or other changes to your household throughout the year to make sure you get the right amount of assistance. Um, what will happen is if you report an income change or something like that, it'll recalculate your eligibility and then um, it'll adjust your uh, tax credits throughout the year. Um, recently, it was announced that some plans may have higher premiums next year. Um, you might have heard some of that in the news. But because tax credits are calculated based on affordability and premium amounts, if the premium of silver plans increase, the amount of tax credits you can get may increase as well if you're eligible for tax credits. So really the best thing I can recommend is um, just apply because you never know what you're eligible for sure until you apply. Um, now there's also assistance available to help with the out-of-pocket costs of your plan like co-pays, co-insurance, and deductibles. And these are called cost-sharing reductions. And you must choose a silver level plan to take advantage of these savings if you're eligible. Um, and healthcare.gov is going to tell you if you're eligible for those and to make sure that you know that you need to choose a silver plan. Um, now, you may have heard some news about cost sharing reductions recently. And just remember, if you qualified for a reduced out-of-pocket cost on a silver plan, the recent news does not change your plan and does not change your benefits under the plan. Your reduced deductible, co-pays, and out-of-pocket maximum stay the same. 
Um, now every deer, uh, excuse me, every deer, I cannot talk tonight, uh, every day <laughs> we hear the reasons why people haven't enrolled in coverage and I want to talk about those for just a few minutes. So the first reason that we hear is that folks are worried that if they buy a plan they'll never need um, or use it. So remember that car health insurance is not like car insurance. You have access to many benefits that you can use to keep you healthy. So as a matter of fact, we recommend not waiting until you're sick um, or if there's an emergency. Make sure to take advantage of all the included preventive benefits. Early detection can save your health and your wallet in the future. And if you have any questions about preventive benefits, I've put a list of those in the comments. We also hear um, sometimes that people think it's cheaper to not have coverage and to just pay the penalty. But remember, life happens when you least expect it. You may be young and healthy now, but what happens if you fell and broke your leg and you didn't have health insurance? Um, I have a good friend and colleague that did just that. When walking out of the vet last year, she fell and broke her leg and she shattered her ankle. And after an ambulance ride, an emergency room visit, and her first surgery, she received a bill of almost $26,000. Um, she, since, since then, she's had three additional surgeries, and thank goodness she had coverage because that one simple fall could have led her to ruin her financial future. So just remember that health insurance is there to protect not only your health, but your future as well. The third thing that we hear frequently is that people have tried to apply and pick a plan, but that the system is just confusing and that they just gave up and threw in the towel. But really, I want to tell you to have no fear. <laughs> um, we know it is a bit confusing. So what we've done is we found help statewide, and it's available on our website, OregonHealthCare.gov. All you have to do is go to OregonHealthCare.gov and click on Find Help, and then search using your zip code. And local assistance is available for free from insurance agents and community partners. If you need help finding help, we can do that too. You can just give us a call. Now, if you're not sure where to go or what to do next, um, please visit our website. I'm putting that in the comments here. And you can answer a few quick questions to find out what programs you might qualify for, uh, whether the Oregon Health Plan or the Marketplace, and also to look where to look for help. Um, a link to these questions, like I said, I just po posted in the comments um, so that they're easy to find. Now, if you're anything like me, you're going to want to get ready to apply, um, and you're not going to want to wait. So, I would recommend getting ready now, and I'm going to give you a couple of quick tips of how to do that. Um, the first thing I would recommend doing is to set up an appointment with a community partner for the Oregon Health Plan application assistance, or to talk to an insurance agent for help going through the marketplace. Um, appointments may be limited due to this year's short open enrollment period, so consider calling and making an appointment today. I do want to note the, um, the website is going to be going down uh, over the weekend, so unfortunately you're not going to be able to search for help on your own. However, if you give us a call, we can still get uh, find help as long as you call. We're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, the second thing that you can do is um, you can make your application quick and easy by getting some documents together. Um, what I would recommend is to consider bringing identification for all of your household members, like your social security numbers and birthdays and income information. Um, it's also helpful to bring a list of your preferred providers, facilities, and prescriptions to make sure it'll all be covered by your new marketplace plan. No problem, Jennifer. It's my pleasure. I love educating Oregonians. Um, and then the last thing that I want to mention is you can apply on your own at healthcare.gov. Now, that being said, and also noting that I am a pretty independent and technologically savvy person, I would still highly recommend to get help from an insurance agent. They, it's completely free of charge, so why not? Um, and local agents really know their stuff when it comes to plans, networks, benefits, and even how to answer questions correctly. So they can, plus in addition to that, they can also be your advocate. So if you run into a bump along the way, they can help you submit changes, um, if you land a new stellar job, have a baby, or move during the year. All right, so really quick, I just want to summarize, um, and then I'm going to open it up just to see if anybody else has any questions. So um, just as a reminder, open enrollment is short this year. It's November 1st to December 15th, so please, please, please mark your calendars, set an appointment, and get ready now. Um, another reminder, financial help is still available, but only if you go through healthcare.gov to apply and enroll. 
And then last but not least, I just want to remind you all that there's local assistance available throughout Oregon in your language. And to search for assistance, you can go to our website at OregonHealthCare.gov um, or give us a call. And I'm going to post the link in the, in the comments again for the search tool here. All right, so I just want to make sure I've answered all of your questions. We've had some people come and go, so I just want to make sure everybody knows um, kind of what's going on and what to do. And does anybody have any questions out there that they haven't um, they haven't asked yet? And I know that there's a little bit of a delay, so there's going to be a little bit of silence while I wait. Nothing. You guys are a really quiet audience today. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jennifer, and I'm glad that you tuned in, even though you're an insurance agent, knowledge is power. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in. I know this was a really, really brief presentation, but I think it was really meaningful. And we're gonna keep it up on our page. So please share with your friends and family. I wanna make sure that you guys um, help everybody spread the word and make sure that they get covered for next year. If you have a husband or a son or a brother-in-law or something like that, a daughter-in-law or friends of the family, just spread the word and make sure that they know about open enrollment being short and what their options are. And again, if you have any questions, we're here to help. I'm gonna leave our phone number here in the comments. So please feel free to give us a call if you have any questions at all, we're happy to help. Thank you again for tuning in and I hope everybody has a great rest of your night.